Hey guys, this is the X-Way X1 Pro Riot, a review unit supplied by X-Way. It is the belt-driven variant of the X-Way X1 Pro, which offers more torque and full urethane wheels. The board comes very neatly packaged and is protected by a tight-fitting foam. Besides the board, you get a 1.5 amp charger, a remote, a T-tool, wristband, two spare belts, and some paperwork. Under the charger, there's a couple of Allen keys, USB charging cable, AC cord, and some extra screws for the motor and motor cover. In this review, I want to comment on all the areas of the board where I feel is relevant. I have ridden about 125 kilometers through some very poor and non-ideal conditions. So I'll start off with its components. The deck is made of a mix of Canadian maple, bamboo, fiberglass, and carbon fiber. All the electronics are inside the deck, leaving you with an ultra slim and stealthy profile. Because of this, the board has no flex. The deck has just enough concave to keep your feet locked in and has a flat profile with no rocker or camber. There is no kick tail, but there is enough of a tail to swing the board around. The underside of the board is unique. It is coated with what looks like a super durable truck bed liner coating, leaving a spot for a heatsink, power button, and charging port. The top of the deck is covered with a 2mm thick shock absorbing grip tape, which probably does more weather sealing electronics than absorb shock. The drivetrain. The Riot uses two custom Hobbywing 52-55 160kV brushless motors, which are censored for a smooth start. They are rated at 750 watt continuous and 1500 watt peak each. The motors have a closed can design, so there's less chance of dirt getting caught inside. I've had no problems with the motors, and they have only gotten slightly warm under heavy loads. The belt is a 255mm long, 11mm wide, with 5mm pitch, made by Continental, which is a very good brand. I have a pair of Continental belts on my mountain board, with over 600 kilometers on them, and they're still going strong. The 5mm pitch is also a good choice, because it is more resistant to skipping when compared to a smaller pitch, like the 3mm ones used on a booster board. I don't like that the Riot uses an 11mm wide belt, because the only place that sells them is X-Way. I would have preferred a 15mm belt, which would have been more resilient against damage. Now I don't know if I got a faulty batch of belts, but I broke three belts in 125 kilometers of riding. I did a quick search online, but didn't find anyone else with the belts breaking early. So maybe I did get a bad batch. But if this is something that continues to happen, I can consider getting the X1 Pro hub motors. The motor pulley is made of steel and will last the life of the board, but the wheel pulley is made of molded plastic, which will last thousands of kilometers, but is susceptible to damage from debris. Speaking of wheel pulleys, X-Way offers optional wheel pulleys that will fit wheels like Kiko, Quaglama, and Abec. So basically you could use popular wheels like the 120mm Foamies, but I wouldn't recommend that. The wheels that come with the Riot are 85mm in diameter, 56mm wide, and 80A hardness. These are X-Way's second generation wheels, and they seem like they've improved the urethane compound, because it feels more rubbery than usual. The wheel core is a proprietary 12-hole design and is made of a semi-translucent plastic. I kind of wish they just cloned the 10-hole wheel core found in orangutan wheels, just so I didn't need to order a second set of adapters. The 85mm wheels might be a bit big, because I'm able to get the front wheels to bite into the deck if I lean hard enough, so that's something to watch out for when carving really deep. This might be prevented with risers or smaller 80mm wheels. Trucks. All X-Way boards come with seismic Aeon trucks. With the 45 degree base plate, the board feels stable all the way to its top speed. I never felt any speed wobbles yet, even with the truck's adjustment a little on the loose side. I do believe they come with triangular shaped 90A bushings. This means normal 90A bushings will not fit, but seismic cells 86A, 94A, and 98A to suit your needs. The board carves well, but doesn't have a very tight turning circle. This is due to the motors hitting the deck on full lean, and can be avoided by rotating the motor mounts to the rear. With the motors mounted on the rear, you also gain full access to the charging port, and in my opinion, it looks better. But you'll lose the ability to lift the board up from the front of the truck and drag it behind you. The ESC, or Electronic Speed Controller. The board has a customized Hobbywing ESC that has very smooth acceleration and braking. Hobbywing ESCs are used in many electric skateboards, but this is the most advanced version available. It features customizable settings for acceleration, braking, and capable of running two different drive systems. It has the ability to update to the latest firmware, unlike other Hobbywing based skateboards where you're stuck with what you get. And best of all, there's a phone app with a nice interface to make adjustments and updates. You can adjust the acceleration and brakes to be as soft and easy for a beginner, 
or as aggressive as you like for the more advanced rider with brakes strong enough to lock up. Based off the rated power, the ESC can sustain an output of about 17 amps per channel and is fully potted for water and vibration resistance. The remote. It has a nice slim profile and has a large thumb wheel with a bit more throw when compared to a Flipsky VX1. It has a small OLED screen which displays the board battery level, remote battery level, speed modes 1 through 4, board direction, and wheel speed in kilometers or miles per hour. Speedometer units can be changed by pressing and holding the button for about 5 seconds. This will bring you to a menu. Then roll the thumb wheel to see speed unit. Press the button and select your desired units. The remote charges via micro USB. It charges fairly quick and lasts about at least 5 hours of riding in my testing. The battery. The X-Way X1 Pro uses flat lithium ion pouch cells. Not the typical 18650 cells that you see in other skateboards. This allows the batteries to be hidden inside the deck while maintaining a very stealthy slim profile. Another advantage of using flat lithium ion pouch cells is that they can deliver more peak current when compared to most 18650 cells. The battery arrangement is a 12S1P, which means 12 cells in series and one parallel group, so 12 cells in total. The battery has a total capacity of 193 watt hours, or 4.34 amp hours at 44.4 volts. It's about 50% bigger than the non-pro version of the X1. The battery pack has an integrated BMS, also known as battery management system, to handle all the balancing and safety cutouts. The battery is also technically replaceable by removing the grip tape and a handful of screws covering the electronics. I really wish they went with a bigger battery, but this would make the deck thicker and ruin the aesthetic X-Way is aiming for on this board. Charging. The kit comes with a standard 1.5 amp charger, which based on my testing takes about 3 hours for a full charge from empty. Although this is considered a weak charger, it has a very unique magnetic charging port. It uses magnets like a MacBook MagSafe charger to make the connection. So no more broken wires or charging ports due to tripping on the cables. X-Way offers an optional 4 amp charger to cut the charging time down to 70 minutes. This is a must have in my opinion. Brakes. I know I mentioned how good the brakes are. But this is one of the things I really do like about the Riot. They can be as weak as you want or strong to the point of locking up, all of which is adjustable through the app. Braking is very smooth even at high speed. Most other hobby wing powered electric skateboards have nice firm brakes at high speed, but tend to get a little soft at slower speeds. This is where the X-Way X1 Pro Riot does it better, with strong braking all the way to full stop. Portability. At 16 pounds is of an average weight, and with a 93 centimeter length and a very slim profile, I would say it is a bit more portable when compared to a boosted stealth. A grab handle would have made it easier to carry around, but would mess with the aesthetics. I'll stick with grabbing it by the trucks and dragging it behind me, or holding the board on its side. Water resistance. This is one of the most water resistant boards out there. The underside of the deck is almost like a hull of a boat, with a bed liner type coating, and a single piece of grip tape that covers the entire top side of the deck, preventing water from touching the electronics access panel. These features give it an IP55 rating, meaning it is mostly protected from all dust and is very resistant from water sprayed from the garden hose at any angle. The only area that might be susceptible to water ingress is the charging port, and even that is sealed with a silicone flap held in by a magnet. Technically, brushless motors are water resistant, but they do have steel bearings, just like wheels, and can be damaged by water. That's why it is a good idea to spin the motors and wheels up for a few seconds after a wet ride and wiping everything down with a dry towel. To test this water resistance, I have deliberately gone out in the rain to grab a coffee and commuted to work a few times, mostly problem free. Although I would never recommend riding in the rain because it's not safe to ride any board in the rain. Warranty and reliability. X-Way boards come with a 6 month warranty which only covers decks, trucks, motors, ESCs, remote and charger. They don't cover wear and tear items and improper use. I wish they could have clarified improper use. For example, the board is rated IP55 water resistance but they also say avoid using it in the rain. With the IP55 rating, it should easily survive riding in the rain, avoiding big puddles. To confirm if an electric skateboard is reliable, I feel you need at least 500 kilometers in testing. Unfortunately, I'll need a few months to accomplish that kind of mileage. But for now, I can comment on what problems I've experienced so far. I've had two cutouts happen on me in the 125 kilometers of riding. The first time was on my way home from work. The board started off fully charged, I rode one kilometer on flat ground, then one kilometer of uphill, and that's when it happened. I had stopped waiting to cross the road, then went to accelerate. 
I moved about half a meter forward, then it just cut out. The remote was vibrating, and disconnected what was displayed on the screen. I tried turning off and on the remote. Nothing. Then I looked at the board, and I noticed the power LED was not on. So I pressed the button and turned it back on, and the remote showed a connection to the board. 60% charge on the road, and 89% on the battery. So I proceeded carefully back home. No problems after that. I'm not sure what happened there, but my guess would be the battery management system decided for whatever reason to cut the power to the controller to protect itself. The second time the board shut off was heading out to grab a coffee. Three kilometers into the ride, I stopped to adjust my camera and they went, went to take off slowly. Again, about half a meter forward and the board cut out. Disconnected as displayed on the remote and the board was off. I turned the board back on and all was good. Until a few more meters, I broke my third belt. Replacing a belt is easy. It requires a 2.5 millimeter hex wrench, a skate tool, and about five minutes of your time. Spare parts can all be bought from xwayboard.com. And so if something isn't listed, just throw them an email, which is also listed on the website. The aesthetics. In my opinion, I think this is the most stealthy, non-e-skate looking electric skateboard, especially with the hub motor drive kit from the non ride version. This board lacks the bulge you would expect to see from an electric skateboard. With identical wheels front and back, the only giveaway is the two little more motors hanging off the back truck. Oh yeah, there's a noise. It's a dead giveaway that you're riding electric skateboard. The sound is something you either love or hate. I personally like it. It gives a noticeable warning to soft targets when you ride by. And if you're not into that kind of racket, there's always the near silent hub motor drive kit that can easily be swapped in. I like how the overall design of the X-Way X1 Pro Ride doesn't try and copy the styling of the boosted board. Instead, they create their own design of what an electric skateboard can look like. Performance. The X-Way X1 Pro Ride is rated to go 45 kilometers per hour, but I assume this is the foot of the rider who is about 120 pounds. Because the highest speed I was able to achieve on this board at a full charge is 40 kilometers an hour on flat ground. That's with me weighing in at 180 pounds, 4 degree weather, and no wind. I also had turbo mode on, which is supposed to unlock the 40 km an hour speed restriction in the fourth speed mode. But this is only if the board has enough power to propel you beyond 40 km an hour. Unfortunately, I'm too fat to make the difference. The acceleration off the line is very torquey, but after that it just feels a little bit better when compared to an own board W2. The X-Way X1 Pro Ride has no problem climbing the steepest hills in my area at an 8 degree incline or 15% grade. Range. This is the area where I feel that this board falls short, so I start off with my two range tests. The first range test was done in speed mode 2, labeled 25 km an hour on the remote, but in reality it goes 20 km an hour max. All the acceleration and braking settings were stock. At the time of the test, I weighed 180 pounds with all my gear on, and it was a cold 4 degrees Celsius. The route I took was all bike paths with about 200 meters of elevation gain, so I'd say it was a slightly hilly route, and the average speed I was doing was 16.7 km per hour. The results was 15.8 km before the board stopped responding to my acceleration inputs. The brake still worked and it coasted to a stop. Battery reading on the remote was 5%. After about 20 seconds, the battery level went up to 15%, and I was able to resume riding for another half a kilometer before it cut out again. Another thing to note during this test was that there was a noticeable reduction in speed and acceleration after about 8 kilometers. I know that the 16 kilometer range I got was nowhere near the advertised 25 kilometers. I must admit, weighing in at 180 pounds is not the ideal rider, and the cold weather and hilly route was not the ideal riding conditions. Also, I probably should have been in speed mode 1, but honestly at 10 kilometers an hour, I'm better off pushing the regular longboard. The next range test was done in speed mode 4, turbo on and max all the things. Conditions, route, and weight were the same as this was done on the same day. The average speed was 23 km an hour, and the resulting range was a, was a disappointing 10.3 km. Again, the throttle stopped responding at 5% and then recovered to 15% after about 20 seconds. I then was able to ride another 1 km for a total of 11.3 km. Obviously, speed mode 4 was more fun as I hit the 40 km top speed multiple times but I felt a noticeable reduction in speed and acceleration after only 4 kilometers. After some research, I found that the range is very similar to boosted stealth. To be fair, I have to weigh in the fact that this is a 16 pound board and cannot compete with boards that have increased weight and battery capacity. But you gotta admit, the maximum range rating on this is overly optimistic. My final thoughts. The X-Way X1 Pro Ride is comfortable due to its full urethane wheels. 
is stable at all speeds with the 45 degree seismic trucks and step deck. And it's also powerful with the bell drive system and 52 55 brushless meters. I feel it is the perfect incognito electric board for short trips to a coffee shop or nearby grocery store to do a little shopping without anyone noticing that it's electric and asking you a million questions. And even more stealth with the easily swapped in hub motors. The ability to customize the board's programming, wheel choice, and drivetrain make this suitable for beginners to an advanced rider. With its limited range, I wouldn't suggest this board for long rides, but the lack of range can be substituted with an optional fast charger and be charged from empty to full in 70 minutes. The fast charger is a must-have in my opinion. I don't think there will be any reliability issues that will leave you stranded as long as you understand its limitations such as range and that belts do break. So keep that charger's spare tire, belts, and tools on you and enjoy the ride. Thanks for watching this long ass video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.